did you know that some organisms exist of just one cell? These simple organisms, like amoeba, are unicellular. They depend on simple diffusion for life. They are usually too small to be visible with the naked eye, like bacteria, and so we need a microscope to see them. But there are some unicellular algae that are about 15 to 20 centimeters in size. All other organisms are multicellular. They consist of multiple cells and are more complex. The vast majority of plants and animals are multicellular. Being multicellular allows the organisms to be larger and have cell differentiation. So different types of cells to carry out different tasks. Groups of cells then function in the same way to form tissues or organs. These specialized organs carry out our life processes, working together in systems. Unicellular organisms can carry out all life processes in just the one cell using internal structures called organelles. The decreased ability to share out life's processes means unicellular organisms have a low level of efficiency, whereas multicellular organisms are highly efficient with division of labor at the cellular tissue or organ system level. Unicellular organisms cannot grow large because they are limited by a surface area to volume ratio whereas multicellular organisms can increase the number of small cells to give it a large size overall. Multicellular organisms have long lifespans because individual cells have a relatively small workload, whereas the hard-working single cell of a unicellular organism has such a heavy workload that it can only maintain a very short lifespan. I don't need to tell you how we get nutrition. But how does a single cell manage it? Usually by phagocytosis, where the food is engulfed and then stored in food vacuoles inside the organism. All prokaryotes are unicellular. Eukaryotes can be uni or multicellular organisms. We look at the difference between pro and eukaryotes in this video. And we'll discover why the statement that, that all prokaryotes are unicellular is contended by some scientists, as well as prokaryotes. Most protists and some fungi, like yeast, are also unicellular. So there we have unicellular and multicellular organisms. Final thought to leave you with is that injury to the cell of a unicellular organism can cause death. Their one cell is everything to them, whereas injury or death of some cells in multicellular organisms should not cause a problem. Those cells can simply be replaced. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Comment below if you have any questions. Why not check out our Fusco app as well? Until next time.